Hello, Dr. Ron Eaglin, and today it's all about advanced WordPress. And we're going to move fast. I'm going to make an assumption that you at least are a decent programmer and that you know a good bit of SQL. Um, it doesn't matter if you know PHP or not, because that's the language we're going to be working in today, but it does matter that you actually understand basic programming constructs and know how to do some database work with SQL. You are now looking at a page right here that is a WordPress page. Okay, This is a WordPress site and a WordPress page. What I'm going to do here is you see this little page right here. I'm going to click Edit Page. And when you go to the Edit Page, you're going to notice that there is absolutely nothing there. You're going to notice it when the page eventually does come up. Well, while it's coming up, what I'm going to do is I'm going to talk to you about um, how WordPress works. So this page which is named Team Rankings. However, if you look behind, you'll see that this permalink has Rankings-Team. Even though I put Team Rankings, that's just the, what you see on the front. The permalink here is what's actually important. Rankings-Team. Now, WordPress has a one-to-one -one relationship between pages. Pages are stored in the database. The database is a MySQL database. The contents of the pages are actually stored in the database. And what WordPress does is when it sees the stuff that you want to put into a page, it actually grabs that text and it sticks it into a file, with a template file. And those template files are actually written in PHP. So let's actually look at those template files. Let's go back to that view page and we're going to look at some of those. So I'm over here now. I'm going to actually bring up my, um, now this is a local copy of the directory here, but I'm going to actually bring this up. And I have right here in, and this is important, I have in my WordPress directory, okay, in my WP content. Now, when you create a WordPress site, the site will have a directory called WP content. And the site will have a subdirectory called themes, and it will have any installed themes that you might have in your WordPress site. Within that subdirectory of the, of the theme, that is the active theme of your WordPress site, actually it'll be in all of them, but you're going to actually have a bunch of PHP files. Now what that's going to happen is a page is going to look for, and this is a page that you might think of as a WordPress page, you go into WordPress, you start typing, it's going to have behind it a template. And that template's going to be a PHP file. And that PHP file is going to insert all the stuff that you type into that PHP. So there's actually some code back here. Now, we're going to look at that code for this specific page right here. Now, when I said there was a one-to-one -one relationship, what I'm saying is, is that if I go into that permalink and I see rankings-team, that means I should have in that template file a file page rankings-rankings-team.php. Yes, it should be there. And what it's going to do in the permalink is say there's a template behind this page because there's nothing in the page. Nothing in this portion of the PHP that's in that page. Where does that code exist? Well, it actually exists in the page-rankings-team. Let's go back to that view page and look at what actually shows up there. What you're going to see here in this case is I've got some links, okay, 2015, 2016, 2017. And um, if I click on one of these, and I'm going to click on overall rankings, and it's going to actually do something. It's now chunking along. It's going to make a really very advanced page that has a lot of information here and it's actually got this beautiful expandable piece right here. And if I go look behind this page, I'm going to notice that it's completely blank too. So let's look at see how I did this. So what I'm going to do first is I'm going to bring up that page rankings team. The page that just showed you, and I'll, and I'll show you first the page. This is the page and we're going to look at the code behind it. Okay, this is the PHP code that goes behind that. And if you look at this, I'm going to bring the code, go to the top, 
Okay, it's going to have a little bit of template. It shows that it's actually got some, some comments here. It's got some styling here. It's got a get header, which is important because that's actually was what pulls the header up. And But the, the piece that I am particularly interested in is the code that shows those three blocks for 2015, 2016, and 2017 that shows that those those blocks, those green blocks with the rankings in, or uh, the, the rankings for each of the individual years. And if you look at what I did here, I set a PHP variable race year to 2015, and then I did an include. Then I did another race year 2016, and I did an include, and I actually then I echoed out some variable, and, and where did that variable come from? Well, we're going to look at that because that's actually in the include, and then I echoed out a space. Okay. Well, that means I really need to look at this race dash rankings dash nav dot text. So let's pull that up. And that's not really a big file, but since I repeated the same thing over and over again with just a change in the years, I didn't want to have to retype all that over and over again. So what is this? Well, it is a PHP, and all it does is it sets this variable, the rankings.nav, equal to a bunch of HTML. That's it. Okay? That's what it does. And in that HTML, I've got some standard HTML tags, div, strong, but notice that inside there I've inserted the variable race year. If you recall, that race year was actually set above that include, which means that that include will just basically pull the, this text here and put it in here, and then it'll echo it out. So I'm creating this rankings nav string and then echoing it to the output. That's what's going on behind the scenes. And that's just PHP. And if you want to learn how to do this in PHP, well, you need to study some PHP. But I'm getting through the basic concepts. I set the year 2015. I did the include of the race rankings nav dot text, which is in the PHP, which basically passed the, the 2015 goes and it actually gets used in that one in this uh, race rankings nav and I and I put it in an include because it's repeated over and over again and then it outputs all this stuff. Wow, well, that's pretty interesting, pretty straightforward. Important things. I've got a variable race year. I've got a variable rankings nav that I created inside this include and then I echoed those out to the screen and then I did it over and over again for each of the individual years. Okay, so we kind of get what's going on there and let's go back and let's actually look at that here in in my um thing. So now you this is what you end up seeing. The green block and all that, that's just some simple styling that goes on. Now let's get into some complex code. Review of what we've actually covered so far. We have a page. Rankings up here. Rankings dash team. I go to edit that page and I'm going to look at that edit that, that page and I'm going to see that it's got a permalink rankings dash team. And that permalink corresponds with a file called page-rankings-team, which is a PHP file that is in the specific theme directory that I'm using inside of WordPress, and it serves as a template for this. And notice that there's nothing in here. Everything I did in that basically code behind piece, which was where, those, um, where the PHP occurred. Okay, now going back to that, let's do something a little bit more complex. Let's go to 2016 and bring up overall rankings. This is a much more complex page, and I have to give a shout out to uh, Rodrigo Munez and Manny Otero, who did a ton of the work on figuring out the SQL queries and setting up the actual structure of how this whole thing works. Now, first let's look at the URL here. I have rankings-team-overall slash 2016, which means that I passed something over. Basically, I've got a 2016 in the URL. So I have to be able to get that and bring that into this page so that I can use it because I'm only wanting to get the, the um, and I'm only passing one. So where is this done? Well, in the structure of 
the pages that we've got right here, we put this in the functions.php file. And I'll go ahead and bring that up with Notepad++ and show you how we did this. What we've got is the query variables, okay? And we've added to the list of query variables here in functions. These are all the different variables that can be in the URL as part of the URL. So we want to actually bring this 2016 down into the PHP code. To do that, I have to have it set somewhere to tell that we're going to do that. And I did that with the query vars. You can actually look through the WordPress structure and see that there's actually multiple ways to do this, but you can see that this is this is one of them. And then, okay, I've I come down here and I set there's an array here of the rules by how you're going to read those different query variables. And down here at the bottom, okay, I've got rankings dash team overall. Then I've got a small bit of a, uh, a an expression. Um, so this expression basically says how is that going to alert? Look, and it's a regular expression, and I'm not going to go over the syntax of regular expressions, but essentially what we're saying is this is the structure of where this variable is going to be. And based on that regular expression, we're now going to come over here and say <coughs> the first match in that regular expression okay, is going to be the race year is going to be the first match in that regular expression. Now, if you have a page where you're sending more than one, well, that's also doable. You use a different regular expression, and then you have the first match and the second match, which can then be assigned to variables you will use in the PHP. Now, again, review here. This is in a file called functions PHP. We've set up a series of query variables which are essentially going to be variables that can be passed to the PHP file in the URL and then brought into the code of the PHP and I don't want to go all the way down into all the other functions but I've got the one these are the only ones that are really important for what we're doing the structure of them, which by the way you can use the structure directly the way we're using it. It's a simple regular expression that just basically says here's where those variables are and here's the structure they're going to have and what of which one is it going to go with so, with, so that it matches. Okay, that's how that works. Pretty interesting. It's a, it's an, it's a way to get the job done. However, if you are going to pass variables into the WordPress file, okay, as part of the URL into that PHP file, you need to look at the documentation. It's not terribly difficult to do, but you've got to look into the documentation of how to get those variables in. There are other ways to do it, okay, but this is one of them that's a very good way to do it. Now, once that's done, we're going to be able to use that variable inside of the PHP file. So now we're looking at a page that actually has the team's rankings, which is a very complex, um, a very complex set of SQL queries that we're going to take a look at. 